SpaceX is about to launch one of the most ambitious and groundbreaking space missions to date, Polaris Dawn. It's going to push the boundaries of space exploration, but it's also going to have a big impact for life here on Earth, specifically healthcare. In this video, we're going to talk about why you should care about Polaris Dawn and why you should tell all of your friends about it. Because in addition to it just being really freaking cool, it's also really freaking important. Before we dive into why you should care about Polaris Dawn, here's a quick overview of the mission. The really freaking cool part. Okay, I had to grab this guy from back there on my bookshelf because he actually plays an important role. So this was the zero gravity indicator on a mission called Inspiration4 a few years ago. If you remember, that was the first all civilian mission to space and it was funded by a billionaire, Jared Isaacman. The whole point of it was to rapidly advance commercial space flight and to raise money for St. Jude to help end childhood cancer. Total side note, but the reason this guy was a zero G indicator is because he's a golden retriever and they have golden retriever therapy dogs at St. Jude. How cute is that? Okay, so after that mission, Jared, the billionaire who funded it, decided that he was gonna book up to three more flights with SpaceX, again, to rapidly advance human space flight, to do a bunch of scientific research, and to continue raising money for St. Jude. And that program is called Polaris. The third Polaris mission will actually be the first human space flight of Starship, but the first Polaris, Polaris Dawn, is of course what we're talking about today. Okay, that's the background, but what are the goals for the Polaris Dawn mission? Well, there's actually four big ones. Number one, they're gonna travel farther away from Earth than anyone has been since Apollo 17 over 50 years ago actually four times farther than the International Space Station. And because of that high altitude, number two, they're gonna fly through the Van Allen radiation belts. Number three, not in the Van Allen radiation belts though, they will do the first commercial spacewalk. And number four, they'll test out Starlink laser-based communications in space for the first time ever. Okay, so now that we have a good understanding of the mission itself, let's talk about why it matters, the really freaking important part. We'll start with the obvious, how it advances human space exploration, and then we'll get into how it impacts impacts your life here on Earth. In order for humanity to go and live on the moon or Mars or in a space station, there's actually quite a lot we still have to learn. As some examples, we need more accessible and versatile spacesuits. The ones we have right now are really big and bulky and not exactly made for a lot of different body types. We also need better and faster communications, especially in this connected day and age. You'd actually probably be surprised to learn that the connectivity on the ISS is not great. And we also need to understand a lot more how being in space affects our bodies and how to improve healthcare for astronauts. Polaris Dawn will make significant advancements in all of these areas. Let's start with the spacesuits. The most flashy part of the mission is of course the commercial spacewalk. Spacewalks, also known as EVAs or extravehicular activities, are some of the most challenging and risky things that you can do in space. But they're also essential right now for repairing spacecraft and conducting science experiments and even testing out new technologies. Until now though, spacewalks have been reserved for government astronauts. But if we expect to have lots of people living and working in space permanently, we need a lot more people trained to do these EVAs. SpaceX actually designed new EVA suits completely for this mission. During the spacewalk, they'll collect a lot of data on how the suits perform, how they move, how they feel, how they protect the astronauts to inform future iterations of these spacesuits. Now, a quick fun fact, even though only two of the astronauts are going to exit the spacecraft, Sarah and Jared, all four of them will be exposed to the space environment because there's no airlock. So they have to depressurize and open up the entire capsule, which means all four of them will wear these spacesuits. Now let's talk about better and faster connectivity. So of course, SpaceX has Starlink. They've been providing internet to various parts of the world for years now, but what Polaris Dawn is gonna do is actually use Starlink connectivity in space for the first time through laser-based communications. A few months ago, the space station startup Fast, which disclaimer, I did work for, they announced actually that they're gonna use Starlink for the first time on their commercial space station, which they intend to launch late next year. So what they learn from the Starlink connectivity on Polaris Dawn will go on to inform how Starlink can be used for 24-7, low latency, high-speed connectivity on future commercial space stations, and even eventually on the moon and Mars. And now let's talk about the space environment on the human body, and this is where we get the mixture of how this improves space travel, but also how it improves life on Earth for all of us. So because they aim to fly the highest Earth orbit, nearly four times as far away from Earth as the ISS, at that altitude, they're actually gonna be flying through the Van Allen radiation belts. These are belts of really high energy charged particles that actually do protect us here on Earth and the astronauts in the International Space Station from being pelted by 
crazy cosmic radiation. Now, normally astronauts would not orbit through the Van Allen belts, but on Polaris Dawn, they actually want to because they want to understand the effects of radiation through those belts on the human body. We don't have a lot of data on this, like hardly whatsoever, because the last time we went through the Van Allen radiation belts was over 50 years ago to get to the moon. And again, they weren't flying continuously through the Van Allen belts, they were just flying through them. But also we have so much more technology today to help us understand these radiation effects a lot better than we could in 1972. Now, the other thing is that being in space physiologically changes your body at a faster rate than when you're here on Earth. So it accelerates a lot of physiological and molecular conditions like bone loss and cognitive function disorders. And actually genes can mutate in space in a matter of days versus potentially having to wait an entire lifetime to see a gene change in someone here on Earth. This means that we can study a lot more about the human body a lot faster by studying astronauts in space. This, of course, in turn helps us here on Earth better detect disease way earlier on and provide better treatment options. So here's an example of an experiment they're doing on Polaris Dawn that helps with this type of research. And I'll put the link here if you wanna go and see all the other research that they're doing. There's actually 40 different experiments from 31 institutions. So this experiment actually uses a rare cutting edge, high resolution CT scan of bone density and structure to hopefully detect really early stage bone loss. So every month, astronauts lose one to 2% of their bone density. Can we see this with just a few days in space? And if so, they'll capture the earliest stage bone loss we've ever imaged. Of course, this will help us understand how an astronaut's bones change and how quickly they change, but it'll also help doctors here on Earth better identify early stage bone loss and provide better treatment options way before it potentially becomes a problem. So all of this to say Polaris Dawn is really freaking cool, but also really freaking important. And it's commercial missions like this that are really pushing the boundaries of what humanity is capable of achieving. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I'm Camille. If you liked this video, please like it and consider subscribing so you can stay all up to date on everything related to space and science and technology.